There we go. Gallery view. There we are. And so when it says setting, done redirecting. And we're live. Cool. Let's see. Hi. Hi. Yes. So there. How are you doing, my beautiful? I am so good. How are you? I'm doing so well. I'm so excited because this, um, you are, you are aligned with everything that this program is about, which is co-creating with the neuroscience and, um, just living your soul's purpose. So, um, Hi, everybody. This is Deb Yeager here and Dr. Denise Simpson. And I'm so, so very excited to have her on the show of um, expert entrepreneurs living their soul's purpose um, because she's a badass and she's doing it. I mean, how many years were you in the corporate world? Oh, gosh. Well, in leadership for 24 years yeah. uh, as a practice, as you know, practice practitioner and a researcher, and then in higher education for 16 years. And then made the transition successfully to entrepreneurship. I made the transition about two years ago to do this full time. So I'm a leadership consultant and a coach, life and leadership coach. So yeah, I get to really live my passion and my purpose every day. Yes, I, um, yes, I agree. So let me formally introduce you. So <laughs> Denise is nationally recognized um, in the expert field of leadership with a PhD. So she's a doctor um, in leadership studies and certified life coach and leadership coach. Uh, she teaches people how to become great leaders in their lives and to deliberately, deliberately create a life of fulfillment and alignment in their highest purpose. And that's why I'm so excited to have you on because you're like the genius behind the scenes of what this is. This is like the mission of um, expert entrepreneurs living their soul's purpose. And she helps clients master their inner forces to fully realize their mental, emotional, and spiritual potential. And that's so important in entrepreneurship and when you're owning your own business to have all of those things uh, attended to. So um, let's kick it off. Like, tell me, tell me everything. Tell, tell me, you, like, tell you all the things. Yes. Tell me all, all the, things. the things. Well, I think it's first, it's important to understand why I left higher education and, you know, I'm still obviously in leadership. Um, but I left because uh, as I was, you know, contemplating my life and, and really trying to just tap into my alignment. I mean, that was the problem is that I was leading and creating by default. You know, I had spent a great deal of time, you know, just on the go, getting, you know, titles, getting um, edu my education, you know, just really getting um, this big ego as I was creating by default. And the more I was doing that, the, the you know, further I got from my spiritual connection. And I was like a spiritual closet freak. Like I did not want to um, share my spirituality or my practice or my principles with, with anyone in my you know, institution or for sure not with my students. And so I felt this yearning in my soul. It was a disconnect that I had created. And it was, it was by default, really. And why, so why do you feel like you like, you know, sheltered that or held back for that? Because I think that's something that we should talk about a little bit. Yeah, well, I, you know, because, well, first of all, I'm, I, I'm in the field of leadership. And, you know, as a practitioner and as a researcher. So in research and academia, it's as far as, you know, the field I'm in, there's no, there's no discussion about spirituality. And so I suppressed it. I suppressed all of that into my stilettos, into my <laughs> shoes. And, you know, I was, I felt like I was living this false life. It was just disingenuous and there was nothing authentic about me anymore. And I had reached a point in my life where I was suffering so deeply. What, you know, I woke up and I didn't have fulfillment anymore. I, you know, all of the money and success and achievement and accomplishment was not filling my soul the way I thought 
it was going to. And so I always had a spiritual practice, but the more you gain success and the more you're in the field, whatever industry you're in, you know, the more time you spend in that area, you, you suppress a lot of that because it's not conventional. It's not something that we should discuss, especially as leaders. This is, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a masculine energy field. You know, there's steps, procedures, systems, very mechanistic. Everything is very, you know, factual and, and um, there's a formula for everything. And so that's, that's, that's what I was creating. And, and then I woke up one day and said, ah, this is really painful. This is really painful. And I can't keep living this way. Was and it, was it like a, um, just a, a visceral body response or was it, um, we're all free from this, some sort of illness. I mean, what was it like that was the, the door hitting you in the face? What was it well, for you? The inciting incident for me and the day I had to pivot for my life was the day I found my father dead. He oh. had died in my childhood bedroom and I had seen him the night before. And I write about this in a book that we're collaborating with, you and I, Deb. And I write about this inciting incident because it, it, it changed my life forevermore. And that was the year 2009. Mm. And I was in higher education. I was um, a, a chair for a very large department at a college. And that day was the day I was taking him as my date to the college Christmas party. And the five years before that, I had never taken anyone. I never even went to socials with my employees, didn't care to have that kind of relationship. I was just you know, very structured, very strict about my relationships with my employees. Um, and that year, I remembered my, my administrative assistant said to me, when are we going to see you actually, you know, socialize with us? We'd love to, you know, bring a date and have you sit with us. And, you know, I said, well, I'll, I'll take my dad. And my dad was going to be my date for that night. And so I kept calling him all, all morning to get him ready for the night because it was a Friday and I was at, at the, at, on campus that morning and, um, and he wouldn't answer my call. And I, I was, you know, going bonkers. I finally left campus and went to his, to his house where he and my mother lived, my childhood home. And, uh, and there was no answer at the door. And, you know, I, I crept into the back and climbed the fence and, you know, jumped in, you know, jumped over the fence and got into the house. And that's when I found him. And that's when I realized how empty his life was and how I was reflecting that. It was a reflection of who I was inside. There was an emptiness. There was all of this, you know, education and achievement and success and control and strategy and manipulation that I had lived on. That was my operating system. That's that's what that's all I knew, is that in order to control, because I couldn't control myself, I I thought I couldn't control my mind or my thoughts. But guess what? I'm going to control all of you, and I'm going to try to control my external circumstances. I'm going to try to control all of my achievement. I'm going to try to control my salary. I'm going to, you know, reach a height that no one has ever seen before in my family or, you know, among my, my circle of friends. And I did, and I was empty inside. And so that's when um, the day I found him was the day that I completely changed my perspective on life. And I went within, I, and during that grieving process, because it was a time where I had to really, really just look at my operating system, really question my programming, really question all of those beliefs. And childhood was not easy. A lot of abuse, a lot of pain and suffering. And because I didn't have control of my body and I didn't have control of my mind as a little girl, I felt that in my young adulthood, as I went to college, it was all about control. So I couldn't control the boundaries. I couldn't control that person invading my space or my body, but guess what? I'm going to control everything else. When I left home at 17 is when I became this tyrant, very controlling, very manipulative. And that was the life I was living. And that's, that was the operating system I was running on until that day. And then through, you know, a spiritual journey and through 
looking at my conscious intention and looking at my operating system and really just you know, going back to my, my spiritual roots and going back to my connection with source is when I realized I had been doing this really painfully wrong. And that was the inciting incident. That is why I'm doing what I'm doing today. That is why I'm in the field of education and empowerment. That is why I'm a life and leadership coach. I don't want anyone to create their lives by default the way I was doing for such a very long, painful time. And that's why I do what I do today. Purposeful, mm -hmm. deliberate, and intentional. And every day it is like this. Every day I find connection not only spiritually, but consciously. It's this beautiful bridging of these two worlds. Your conscious intention, which is your mind and all of those you know, beliefs, either self-limiting or abundant beliefs, right? We need to identify, we need to find awareness around that. And then we get to do the spiritual connecting, right? And that's when we just return to our natural baseline of love. We return to that, to that, that, um, inherent connection with source or the universe or whoever, you know, whatever you want to, however you want to define that there is a connection and we've been suppressing that for so long. And so through my coaching and through my frameworks and through my teachings, I show women and men, individuals who are interested in going from the, 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 the default creation of life to the deliberate creation of life. And I show them the gap and I show them where they are now and where they want to be and how to fill that gap with all of those resources and tools and spiritual practices and principles that will help you become that deliberate creator uh, to deliberately create these magnificent lives that are ready to be had. And so that's what I get to do every day, Deb. <laughs> So beautiful. And I love the fact that um, everyone listening, she's also uh, highly trained um, in neuroscience. And so I love the fact that you can actually bridge the gap of spirituality and neuroscience, because if you go down the study in the rabbit hole of quantum and quantum mechanics, it turns into explaining a lot of spiritual practices that people have been doing for thousands and thousands of years. And it's like bringing it back around full circle. So it's, it's like you have the evidence, the scientific for those people that are still stuck in what we call um, an NLP, it's the conscious mind, logical, re reasoning, factual, mm -hmm. the realist type of mindset, you still have the evidence through the neuroscience and the quantum mechanics that you're bridging together to really hone in in a holistic approach of deliberate creation and living a life of fulfillment because it takes all levels. We talk about this all the time, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical plane. And yeah, understanding absolutely. how they all have overlap and they all work with each other to yeah. deliber deliberately create the life that we want. Yeah. So, you know, science helps us understand the models of the world that we created, but spirituality, that is what helps us cope with those models that we've created. <laughs> right. I mean, if you guys are distracted right now, come back to us right now, because that is such a powerful statement. And that's science. And that's where the neuroscience comes in. And that's when the, the NLP comes in. And that's when, you know, all of that beautiful body of work that is empirically researched <laughs> that we get to use because that helps us understand these models. But then spirituality is going to help us cope with those models that we've created, right? And so you have these two very powerful elements that create you holistically. And these are the two things that we need to bridge. But again, some of us are living in imbalance, right? Some of us are running on the logical, rational, cerebral, intellectual, which I tend to do on a daily basis. That is, that's my natural state of being. I immediately go into research. I immediately go into the data. I want to know if it's empirically researched before I go and use it on my client or before I go and consult with a, you know, a Fortune 500 organization. I need to bring the science. And that's just how my brain has been trained over the years as a researcher. And so that's powerful. And, and, and you will know you know, where you are, you'll know if you're more spiritually, spiritually inclined versus more logically inclined. And the goal here is to balance the two. So for me personally, I have to be intentional in bringing in my spiritual practice every day, because if not, I will run on that operating system of logic, intellect, 
cerebral, you know, all of that research drives me and it drives me crazy. I love it. Like it's, it, it just, it really, there's, it, it's a calling to a desire I have, right? So, so I'm, I don't want to deny that side of myself, but I also need to be very conscious of, you know, finding the balance with the spiritual aspects of who I am and who are inherent within me who I've been suppressing for a very, very long time. So for me, it's very intentional in balancing these two worlds. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, ask yourself this, if you guys are watching right now or watching the replay or wherever you're listening to us, you know, wh where do you, where do you fall? Are you more spiritually inclined? Or are you more rationally or logically inclined? And so this is where we need to find awareness around that and then find ways to, to, to find the equilibrium and rebalance that or recalibrate that. Absolutely. And, you know, I love the logical, factual, conscious mind, very action driven, masculine type of energy approach. I mean, that's where you get shit done and you start getting results on the physical plane. And if you're out of whack with the energetics, you're actually going to make it 20 times harder for yourself. Yes. And so the spirituality mixed in with the physical plane. That's why I love mixing. And a lot of people probably think I'm crazy. The spirituality behind business and having spirituality in the practice of business, um, you can have the best of both worlds to make your manifestations happen that much quicker. And I love that you're doing it from the science and the quantum science. And <laughs> but then your 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 years of experience of leadership and all the tools and techniques that you teach to help your clients break through to the next level. So tell us a little bit more about, okay, so I know that it's called the three pillars for deliberate creating. So tell me, tell me more about that. Yeah. So when a client comes to me or when I'm teaching in the deliberate creators club, which is my life coaching membership, you know, we, we have to identify the two different types of people, right? And, then, and I mentioned that at the top of our call, we've got those that are creating by default and those that are deliberately creating. And those that are creating by default, and I described basically my life, and you know, these are the people that are living at the effect of others. They're living at the effect of the government or society or, or their, their operating system, their unconscious or subconscious operating system. These are people who blame everyone else for their misery, for their agony, for their misfortune. These are people that cannot see past the illusion of all that pain and contrast. They are, they're not present in their, in, in embodying their present power because they're still running on that contrasting, you know, uh, bitter past that they, that they have experienced. And it's not to say that, you know, you don't have a right to feel that way, but if you do want to, you know, find a fulfilling and create a fulfilling life, then we need to look at that operating system, right? We need to look at what has been driving you. And, and why you're creating what you're creating. Because all I have to do is look at a client's life, the results that they have created, and I can tell them exactly how they've been thinking. I can tell them exactly what their belief systems are. Because all I have to do is see what they've been creating and manifesting in their life. There's a direct correlation to that. And so these are the people that feel that they're all alone, that God has left them or that, you know, source has left them behind. They're in isolation. You know, it's all of them against me, or this is just the luck. This is my luck. This is, it, it, it all has to do with, you know, the right per the right family you were raised in, you know, the right college you went to or didn't go to. So there's a lot of external blame as opposed mm -hmm. to looking internal. And I, and I know, you know, we, we do this a lot in NLP. We look at you know, the unconscious limiting beliefs. And, and we spend a great deal of time there because we have to. We have to spend time in the, un in, the, in the unconscious so that we can then get them to this conscious awareness. And so that's, a, that's a, a person who creates by default versus a deliberate creator. And this is the person who uses their mind to decipher from the illusions of their past, right? The past, and again, yes, the abuse happened. Yes, all this happened, right? You have every right to feel that way. But when we, when we step into our present power and we get to look at all of that as an illusion and we get to now create from this space of love, from this space of freedom, you know, these are, these are people who find a direct correlation between their fulfillment, right? All of, you know, that deep fulfilling lives that they created and with all that manifestation, right? There's like this 
there's a, it's, it's more of an embodiment of this, of, of alignment, right? It's just this ease and effortless and, and a knowing that all is well and knowing that, you know, source, you are connected to source or God or universal spirit. And you are from this place, from this present place. Yes. With all of the awareness that you have that you have worked on and earned, right? Because of that experience, you're now able to deliberately create this beautiful, magnificent present and future. And so there you've got the, those that, that create by default that will stay there unless someone tells them it's okay to release that. It's okay to leverage that. I wanna show you how to leverage all of that pain and suffering so that you can then be standing here in your power so that we can create and embrace that beautiful, magnificent future that you deserve. And that's a deliberate creator wants that. A deliberate creator is ready to do the work. And I take my clients through th these three pillars. And the first one is conscious intention. We want to find first and foremost, find awareness, right? We want to find awareness of that operating system, right? We want to, we want to go there. And it's not like, you know, because coaches, we're, we're, not, we're not able, as far as training, you know, we're not equipped to you know, do what a therapist or a psychotherapist can do. What we're interested in is, is getting you to fill that gap between where you are now and where you want to be. But we don't ignore the past. We certainly don't. We have to find awareness around that. And so what I get to do is help my clients find those limiting beliefs at the unconscious level. And we get to use NLP. We get to use the quantum field of energy. We get to use timeline therapy. We get to use you know, conventional neuroscience principles. Um, yeah, we get to do all that. But we have to first do that because you can't step into your highest power on top of an old, debilitating, self-limiting programming. It makes no sense. How do you expect to live at your highest and greatest self when you're still building upon all of that, you know, a, a, a bitter, resentful, debilitating, self-limiting beliefs? It doesn't make any sense. Right? So we have to go there first. And that's what I do with my clients. I take them through that process first and foremost. And then when we're ready to move forward is when we find reconnection to source. And we do this in multiple ways. You know, we, you know, some some people are, um, you know, not interested in religion, right? And that's okay. Um, they're they're mostly open to spiritual awareness and, and and really accessing their spiritual intuition. And I would say that this program or what I do with my clients is best for those people who are open to really just. Uh, accessing that intuition and reconnection with source or universal spirit or divine intelligence. And so we, we have to do first the conscious work before we do the spiritual work. And in A Course in Miracles, I mean, we, we talk about spirituality being a, a mindset. <laughs> it's a belief because it all stems from, from your belief system. And so again, we're looking at you internally, like we're, we're you know, we're, we're taking a look at your mind and your spirit and the belief systems that you have been operating on and what needs to be changed. And then after we get to do that, we then tap into your spiritual knowing and your spiritual intuition. And so, you know, a lot of us, like I said earlier, we suppress that side of ourselves, right? Cause that is, it's not conventional. That's not part of conventional wisdom. You know, the whole, the whole adage of no pain, no gain is what <laughs> we run on. You know, some of us are running, running on, you got to use your willpower and you'll manifest it or you'll get it done, but you got to use your willpower, you know, or how, how's that other one? Um, never let them see you sweat. So there you are a robot at work because you can't stress out. You can't show any emotion. You can't show any feeling. And so all of that, all of that. It's just really, you know, keeping you from tapping into that spiritual intuition that is already inherent within you. But because of life's circumstances and because of past experiences, you know, we, we suppress it further and further down into our shoes until one day you wake up and go, what was I creating? I'm in this unloving, toxic marriage. I'm living, you know, I'm working at this horrible organization, you know, not fulfilled, not rewarded for my, for my work. You know, I have no friends. I have no one to talk to. God has left me. Oh my goodness. So you then wake up to this realization that you have been truly, truly doing this painfully wrong, right? 
but we needed to experience that. We needed the contrast to get to where we are today and, and, and finding awareness around that. And so again, like I said, that first step is we, we, get, we gain awareness. We glean awareness around all of that, you know, operating systems that have not been serving you. And then secondly, we go into really tapping into that spiritual intuition. And it can be super, super painful. I mean, I've been interviewing quite a few different entrepreneurs that literally, quote, hit their rock bottom, which is what you're explaining. Or I like to call it from like the tarot. I mean, it's very clearly stated in the tarot. It's the tower, right? Everything crashes down around you. You're like, what the? You know, you're like, everything that I used to do in the past isn't freaking working. And like, I don't have any strategies. I don't have any, like my beliefs have been shred from me because everything does not conduce to the new self and it doesn't, the environment is not the same. And so it's like, it's that it's the most uncomfortable yet most enlightening experience of your life. Mm -hmm. Um, so my question is, and this is something that we also talk about in the training, like, do you like working with people that feel this coming on and that actually have the conscious awareness to say, hey, I'm going down this slippery, slippery slope. I see the, the warning signs because a lot of times, I mean, if you hit rock bottom or if you have the tower experience in your life, it's because you weren't listening to the signs, right? There was a tap on the shoulder. Then it was right in front of your face. You're like, eh, it's okay. You know, and then it's right here. And you're like, oh yeah, I don't want to look at it. This is like, Push! you know, yeah. so what about the people that are maybe working in a career that they feel is all wrong for them? Or they have a sense that the relationship isn't really working or they feel like there's something more for them in their life. And yet they don't, they don't really know how to put their finger in it, but they're starting to see the signs. Do you like working with people does it work the same that way with your process that you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really, so like in my coaching practice, I, I, people come to me with surface level problems, mm -hmm. right? And then after a few sessions and really, cause I, I design a specialized curriculum for all my clients. So, you know, it's, it's like, I, we don't wing this, you know, they come to me with their surface level problem. And then I have to do a little more digging, a little more digging and more time than I spend with them than the real, really deeply rooted causes are, you know, come through. Right. And so that's when they let their guard down and they're ready to expose themselves. And that takes a really good coach because a good coach will get it out of them. Right. And yeah. it may take a session. It may take a few sessions, but you know, they come to me with those surface level problems. And then again, we get into some of the deeply rooted stuff that they've been battling with. And, and, and yet yeah, at that point, hopefully they come to awareness because I have them look at their lives. I have them look at their results that they've created. You know, we, we look at all of the areas of their lives from relationships to finance to, you know, spirituality. Ooh, talk about a way to <laughs> unravel it. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and that's the thing is that, you know, coaching is serious business. You know, this is, and I always tell my clients, I hope you interviewed three coaches before you hired me, because I, I, I want you to know that this is this, I am the person for you because I know where I can take you. I know the potential that's within you. I know the leader that resides in you. And I know how to get you from point A to point B. And I know how to help you fill that gap. And I help you mind the gap because you have to mind the gap as you're going through the motion, as, as you are on that transformational journey. There's no leaping, like, you know, to have concrete for everlasting results, we have to be very thoughtful in, in our process together, but we will fill that gap and I'll get you from where you are today to where you want to be. And so after, you know, we, we do some, you know, deep sessions, uh, you know, the first few times, you know, then the real root causes come out. And then that's when I, you know, design a beautiful curriculum for them. And, and I get them to look at all aspects of their lives, everything that they have been creating. And we, you know, we first pick an area of their life that they are unfulfilled in. And a lot of them, you know, it's finance, some, you know, could, are relationships, intimate relationships. Some of these people are married and by the time we're done, they're ready to file for divorce because they yeah. have realized this is, this is not, this is not something that I, I want to continue living through and this, I deserve more. And this is, you know, and, and, and before we get to that point though, there's, there's still a lot of talking about next steps, right? We don't just jump the gun like this, but yes, they, 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 they'll find awareness 
around those limiting beliefs and what they have been creating. And we dig very deeply into, into those areas. And so for those of you who are watching, I mean, that's the first question I'm going to ask you is what do the results of your life look like? You know, what are, which, and, and, and did these results yield true fulfillment for you? And if not, why not? And if so, great. How do you repeat it again in all your different areas of your life? So take those questions that I, as I just asked and, and really look internally and look at what you, you know, who you are, your operating system, you know, your spiritual intuition, what are, you know, are you imbalanced? Or are you balancing this out beautifully every day? You know, are you reaching for alignment every day between your mind and your spirit? Are you in alignment with your highest and greatest purpose? What is missing from your life? These are the things that we have to explore. These are the things that we have to do internally. Then I want you to look at what you've been creating outside of yourself, because that is a true reflection of who you are and what you've been creating and the belief systems that have been driving those decisions that you've been making and, and therefore creating. So. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's all about awareness, number one, and then really looking at the root causes, which are the belief systems. And a lot of times trauma, a lot of times accepting, you know, um, you know, being in scarcity mindset, which is belief systems and values and all the programming that we've got that create the reality in which we live. And then we continue to project it into the future because we're unconscious about it. So clearing that out. And then what is the, the last step? I know the intuitive, intuitive connection to source and spirituality and bridging the gap. But with this is another thing we also talk in the training. That's why I feel so aligned with you. Um, so ever since I've met you, just because everything that you say, I live and breathe with what we do in our company and um, we're right in alignment for it. So share us the last step. <laughs> yeah. So number, so as Deb just said, number one, conscious intention, number two, you know, accessing your spiritual intuition. And then when, once we have these two beautiful aspects, these, this holistic look at who you are, then we get to take inspired action. Mm -hmm. And so what I take my clients through, and I want to do this with us too, is, is give you the analogy of the, the sea, like you're, you, as in the ocean, as in you're looking at it cross-sectional and you've got the the waves of the, you know on top of the surface and perhaps it's you know a storm that's coming through and perhaps you know the elements mother nature all of the external sources all of that is just you know really crashing into the waves and and really causing you know you to be unsteady on the surface and and that represents your brain that represents your mind and those self-limiting beliefs and a lot of us are in these mental loops all day, every day. You know, we worry about the future, we worry about the past, and we can't be present with ourselves. And so just think of that surface where all of those, all of those waves are just, you know, it's, they're angry, it's, it's, it's vehement, there's just, you know, a lot of energy, electricity, a lot of thunder, a lot of, a lot of um, un, unsettling rest, right? And then as you're watching that happen on that surface, I want for you to think of that as your mind. But as you drop a hundred feet down below, the current is still there, probably not as strong as it is on the surface, but you drop a hundred feet down and you acknowledge it. And that's just taking you from your conscious intention, from your conscious mind, deep into your soul, your spirit. And as you then drop even further and you land on the ocean floor, that is when you are in complete alignment. You are congruent with your source, with, connect, with spiritual connection, with the universal spirit. You give that brain a rest, all of that wind and water and, and lightning and, and the storm that came through is there still sitting on the surface, but then you get to drop down slowly to the bottom of the ocean floor. That point, that's when I want for you to take inspired action. That's when I want for you to make decisions. That's when I want for you to say, this is not gonna work for me anymore. This relationship has had it. I deserve more. I've been accepting less, you know, lesser of myself here. Like it's now time to deliberately create this magnificent life that is waiting to be had. 
And so I want for you to think of that analogy as you're dropping into your spirit, because it's important to, to handle the unrest on the surface, right? Which represents your minds and, and your operating system, right? That's, that's, the, that's the analogy of the waves crashing and the, you know, the, the vehement waves on, on the surface of the ocean. But what, what represents your spirituality and your alignment is as you go deep down into the ocean, as you reach the bottom of the ocean floor. And it, all it takes is a few breaths in and out in the imagery of this cross-sectional view of the ocean. And perhaps you are in a boat on that surface, perhaps. Or perhaps you're, you know, struggling to get air. Perhaps you're, you know, trying to get to shore. Perhaps you're just, you know, trying to survive and stay alive. And so I want for you to notice what it feels like to go from that torment, to go from that agony, from that painful, painful past or the painful, you know, present that you're living and drop down, down through the bottom, you know, down into the ocean. And as you take those leaps down, you settle your mind and you settle your heart and you find this peace and tranquility that you've never felt before. And it's a beautiful guided meditation or process that you could use. And in the Deliberate Creators Club, I have guided meditations for our members. And this is to help them, you know, really find alignment with themselves and with their, you know, with their connection to source or to their spirituality. And so that's what we get to do in the Deliberate Creators Club. We, we are intentional. You know, we leverage our past and we, we get to really embody this present power that we hold so that we can then embrace this beautiful, magnificent future. And so the Deliberate Creators Club, gets, we get to do that and we get to have some fun in there. But, but first things first, we've got to, you know, tend to those um, unconscious beliefs and programming that uh, have been operating our lives. And now we, we get to find awareness around them and you know we get to change them, modify them, alter them, whatever we need to do. And then we go within and then we go deep within our spirit. And then ultimately that last step is to find alignment. And that's where you, know, you drop to the bottom of that ocean floor. And that is the space where you should make decisions. That is where you can deliberately create the beautiful life that you want. Absolutely. You just explained um, what we talk about in the three-day business and also the uh, practitioner training, um, working on the surface level with the conscious mind and really becoming aware of our reality and then dropping down into the unconscious and working on those subconscious, unconscious beliefs and patterns and then dropping because we believe um, with the Huna and other just esoteric uh, teachings, yeah. the unconscious mind has direct connection to the higher self. And then, so once you have all of those in alignment, like you just said, through your metaphor, the ocean, then it's time to come down to the physical plane and take inspired, massive action because in order, and you know, with the neuroscience is like in order to rewire and create the new you internally, um, you must take action. And in, in order to create a new environment, you must take action, which I believe is probably the hardest piece for most people to do because they can do the work, they can be aware, they can clear all the stuff. And yet there's this, there's this gap that happens if they're not working with a coach like yourself, if they don't have the accountability to take action and get out of their own way and actually become the new person, because there's that transition where you're walking over the river, you're, you're literally going over and you're becoming the new person. And a lot of times it takes putting down boundaries with people in your reality, which you're having those really uncomfortable conversations that you don't want to have that you've been avoiding for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And then little by little, you create the new you, you become more confident, you become more strong. And before you know it, you're living in a totally new environment. So I, I love that. I love that <laughs> metaphor. I think I may um, borrow it <laughs> in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's just, it gives you this visual, 
right? This yeah. visual explanation. And as you're visualizing this in your brain, and as you know, with timeline therapy and everything we do in NLP, I mean, it's important to, to visualize this and, and, and you are the character in that play. So if, you know, you are on that boat and you are trying to get rescued or you're trying to reach shore, or perhaps you have fallen into the water and you're trying to, you know, catch your breath and stay alive, perhaps that's you and, and, or whatever character you want to play on that surface. Surface. But then you purposely, intentionally go deep down, uh, you know, as you until you reach the ocean floor, and that will settle all of that unease, settle all of that unpleasantness that you have been feeling, all of that. And and of course, there's so much work to that. But this is a great, um, you know, analogy or meditation that you could use at, when you're trying to quiet all of those self-limiting, self-sabotaging, debilitating thoughts that we all are. I mean, we're all human. We think of all the, you know, some of us more often than others, you know, some of us have a better manage on them than others, but, you know, you get to, you know, use that analogy and then just rest your mind and, and settle into your spirit and then knowing that all is well and that you are cared for and that the universe has all of the resources for you to, 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 to utilize and to, you know, take advantage of. That, that is, is, is what I take my clients through is that visualization. And then when they hit that bottom floor, like you said, we're now in the physical plane. Let's let's go to work. Let's you know here's here's where the inspiration happens, and this is where I want for you to take that inspired action. Ah, oh, that's incredible. You also kind of explained um, a, a technique that we do in the masters. It's called drop down through, where you actually drop down through the emotional gestalt and you get down to a place of total serenity, which we call the void, which is the quantum. Um, it's very interesting. Like there's so much overlap in what you're doing already with, I mean, it's all comes from the same thing. Like all of this wisdom, nothing, nothing is new. It's just, there's different ways of explaining it and different processes that we all do in our own unique way. That's, that's really cool. So tell me, okay. So then, um, so why, so tell me, you know, how did you discover this framework? Well, so when, when I found my father at, in 2009, dead in my childhood bedroom. That's when life changed. And that's when I started to really look within. And so, you know, as a researcher, and again, as someone who, who is just, who gravitates to research and, you know, and is, and is very intellectual, you know, there's in intellectual desire for me. There's, there's always um, something to read, something to research. I'm always inspired by literature. I'm always inspired by, by, you know, the latest studies or the latest research. So for me, that was just natural. And I didn't want to deny that. I didn't want to deny myself of that. You know, I wanted to continue that. I didn't want, I wanted to find the balance between the mind and the spirit. And so that was the pivotal inciting incident for me was when I found dad. And, and then during that grieving process, you know, it's like, I can have both of these. I, this is, this is who I am holistically. So I can't deny one or the other. And that's when I started to use that framework for myself and, and went back to the teachings of Abraham, went back to the Course in Miracle miracles went back to, you know, Dr. Wayne Dyer's, um, uh, you know, uh, teachings and, you know, all of those great authors who have really, really influenced how I work today. Mm. You know? And so that's, that was, that was the reason, that's the reason why, and that's why I do what I do. And so now I get to do this in my coaching practice. So this is basically, you know, what you experienced yourself. And then you created this amazing process that you take your clients through. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. And so again, it, there's, there's formula to this only because I, I want, I want to take our, our members and our clients through that process where we first, first have to look at that conscious, the conscious intention. And then, and then once we get all that ready and prepared, they are ready to then tap into that spiritual intuition, because again, you can't step into your highest purpose or your greatest self on top of those old debilitating self-limiting beliefs what's the point <laughs> like you know from the house of cards um game you know i don't know if, if if you've ever played that but you know you set the foundation of those cards and then you start building upon the cards and you try to get it as high as possible when your foundation is unsteady and here you are building success achievements 
you know, all of the, all of all, everything that society rewards you for, right? Like education and, and titles and all that. But here I was building upon that very unsteady foundation. Again, those were the operating systems that were driving my decisions, all of those self-limiting beliefs at the unconscious level. Mm. Here that was, that was my foundation. And I was building upon it, trying to cover it up, like just trying to, you know, seize from it existing, from it ever happening, right? Everything that I endured as a little girl, all of that pain and suffering and abuse. And so for me, it was like, oh, I'm just going to keep covering it up and covering it up with more and more and more, more money, more, more titles, more education until again, the, the day I found my dad, the whole house of cards came tumbling down for me. And that's when I realized, whoa, how unfulfilling has this been, has this life been for me? I've been creating this by default. And in looking at my father's life as well, and, and the imminent, you know, death of my mother that was coming, she was suffering from Alzheimer's at that time, which is another reason why I'm, I'm, I'm really influenced by neuroscience. You know, I started by trying to understand her dementia and then ultimately her Alzheimer's. And as I was doing more research in neuroscience and in what was happening in her brain, that's when I just Ooh, it turned me on. And I was, I was ready to explore the mind and the brain even further. But again, it, it, took, the ho- it took the house of cards tumbling down for me to realize, oh, I had been building on this very unsteady foundation and it was time to rebuild it. And that's exactly what I did. And because it has worked for me and it has worked for my clients, I developed it into a, a, a life coaching membership so every month we get to do some work around the quantum field, around the mind, you know, around a tool that I use, the sacred circle of alignment that I use to help uh, you find uh, awareness between your mind and your spirit. And that's a daily, you know, self-coaching framework that I designed for them. So that's, that's how I got into that. I did it for myself. You know, I'm, I'm living proof of a deliberate creator. Um, and, and now I get to do it with my clients and now in the membership. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit more about that and the membership and who is this for and um, all the things. So if, if anything that I shared with you today, those of you who are watching, and if you're multitasking, come back to me. I really, really want for you to, to hear me here because if, if, if what I shared with you resonates with you and you are asking yourself right now, these areas in my life are not fulfilling and I have been creating by default. If any of what I said resonates with your heart and your mind logically, and you are ready to push, to push on, to, to really look at those self-limiting beliefs so that you can then move forward as a deliberate creator, then this is the program for you. It's a life coaching membership. So it's, it's, what that means is every month we pay a fee. We do live coaching in there. So all of my members get an opportunity to do live coaching with me because I am taking fewer and fewer private clients at this point because my intention is to really focus on this membership. And so the opportunity to work with me intimately is inside this membership. And so we get to do some deep work. We get to do the mind work. We get to do the conscious intention work. And then we also get to do the spiritual alignment work. And that's where we have several sessions throughout the month. Um, We have a calendar that everyone has access to inside the membership and you are able to choose and, and, you know, engage and participate in one of my sessions. Um, And so we have uh, the quantum circle is tomorrow night, for example, where we, we go into the quantum with our, with our intentions and the quantum is a fertile field. It's a fertile ground where we get to then plant those intentions there. And so we go through that process where you come in with an intention that you want to set and we get to do that in the quantum circle. So that's tomorrow night, you know, for example, uh, um, the sacred circle is what we also do where we look at the sacred circle of alignment and we get to do some coaching in there. So again, it's a coaching framework. So, you know, you don't have to work with me one-on-one anymore. You now get to have this coaching framework and you get to use it, you know, on a daily basis to coach yourself out of any, any life circumstance. You get to coach yourself out of any debilitating mindset or, you know, or, or belief that you have. 
And so it's a beautiful framework that I designed that I use in my coaching practice. And now you all get to have in the membership. And so it, uh, and again, some other sessions that we have in there. Um, and so it, you also get a, a beautiful curated box. It's called the Sacred Space Welcome Box. And it is, it's titled Sacred Space on Purpose because I want to help you really enhance your spiritual practice. And in this box, you're going to receive as soon as you, you enroll and um, some very special tools in there that I've selected for you to, to add to your spiritual practice or to begin your spiritual practice. And so all of our members get a little present from me for joining the membership. And so, yeah, we get to do some deep work in there and we get to do it as a group and we get to do it one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if you want to be coached by me, that's the only place you can get coached at this point in time. Um, but it's a, it's a beautiful life coaching program that again, covers these three pillars in, in detail. That's where we get to mold the clay. You know, that's where we get to put our hands in the clay and start molding our lives, and start then creating these beautiful, you know, beautiful lives that are just waiting to be had by you. And so, yeah, that's what we get to do in the Deliver Creator Club. It's beautiful. Um, I'm actually a member and I um, got this gorgeous box with this um, beautiful stone that was wrapped around with Palo Santo. And um, but it's, it's great for people that are already doing the spiritual practice, but also people that are beginners. It gives you a, a solid foundation. And she has all these amazing courses and information. And it's really like it's powerful because you're you're getting coached by somebody that has an invitation only waiting list to work with her. So you're getting a piece of her and like getting this coaching for a very, very small, um, like for the value, like, I can't believe it. It's like a giveaway in my opinion <laughs> and all the information, because it's, it, it's giving you courses and knowledge and all the stuff that I totally love and it's life-changing work. So I'm, I'm really excited. Um, everyone that's listening to this, take it, take her up on this offer because, um, I don't know how long you're going to be doing it. You were saying that you may, um, close it for a while and then reopen it or not open it at all because it's been such a great success and you want to make sure that it stays a certain way. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Enrollment will reopen November the 5th. Oh, it's already closed. Yeah. So yeah, it is closed right now. <laughs> But we are, we're getting ready to reopen and we're getting ready to add more courses in there. So again, this is, this is independent study really, but, but guided independent study, you know? And so you've, you've got, you'll, you'll have options of courses in there to take at your leisure. And then you've got the monthly call schedule that you'll have. Um, that you can, you know, tap into any of those sessions at any time. And you can always watch the recordings if you're not, you know, there live with me, which is okay. And every month we have a master class. And so this month is honoring um, the, the wisdom of our, of our ancestors. And so we're, because it's October and it's a magical, magical month for many people. And there's a lot of, you know, movement in the spirit world right now. There's a lot of energy flowing right now because of, you know, Halloween and the other Los Muertos that's coming up also in my culture. That's something that we celebrate every day, <laughs> um, but it's a national holiday. Um, and so I wanted to put a master class for all of our members um, to really just look, you know, find awareness around the wisdom that we that, that our our ancestors have have bestowed upon us, and also look at you know the things that, that they didn't do right by their families, right? You know, we want to find awareness around all of it, the good and the bad. And so that's what this month is about. It's just really finding awareness around the, you know, the, the, your past ancestors. And so again, we do monthly, you know, master classes along with those other monthly calls that I offer, uh, the live coaching that I offer. Um, but right now we are officially closed, but we are reopening November 5th and, and it's exclusive. It's really an exclusive program. I, you know, I, do, I don't want this just for anyone. Really, it's for, for someone who is ready um, to really harness the power of her conscious intention and really access that spiritual intuition. I mean, that's the woman I want in this program. So I, I have it closed um, more often than not, because <laughs> I want to, I want to make sure that we're, you know, we're bringing in the right people who are ready, who are ready to do the work. And if you're not ready right now, you keep us in mind for when you are ready. 
And if you just want to enhance, you know, all of these resources and tools that you already use and have, then, you know, we, we're, that's all we're going to do then is just expand upon your, your current knowledge base. And so, yeah, we're going to have some really great offerings for this November 5th reopening. Absolutely. Well, that's incredible. And I love that you're really staying with integrity because it, you know, if we are going to be deliberately creating together, then it's, it needs to be alignment with whoever's in the circle because um, our consciousness affects each other. And that's, I love that you're being very selective. Yes. Um, and I'm so excited too, because you're going to come to, um, so uh, Dr. Denise has signed up for practitioner and master practitioner and um, she's going to even have even more tools to help her clients break through to the next level with the timeline and all the different things. And um, will you share a little bit about your, your success coming out of the three-day business training? Because um, everyone that's listening, we're also having a three-day business training coming up where we mix and blend spirituality with business and sales and manifestation and all the quantum with around money yes. and really manifesting our dreams. And I, I wanted to share the story of her her because as soon as she got this information, she went and take inspired action and she had tremendous success. Yeah. <laughs> Massive. I have to tell you that that three day training was life giving, honestly, life giving. I have made some big drastic personal decisions because of that training I had with you and Brennan. It was, and, and at one point I will be able to share a very big personal decision that I made after that training. Um, and that is forthcoming. I will definitely share that, especially if you're in our membership, you will, you will hear about this story. But what Deb is referring to is that as soon as that happened, um, I went back to my, you know, my business plan and just you know, really looked at my offerings, the value I was giving, you know, I, I, because I, I, I typically coach leaders and these are leaders that come to me for, you know, leadership consulting or leadership coaching. And so as I was working with these leaders and, and they were coming to me with their leadership problems, and as we were working intimately over time, their personal issues came up. You know, that was part of our conversation because you take your mind and your heart everywhere you go. So a lot of my leaders were coming to me with separate lives, with very different lives from their personal lives. And here they were sacrificing their personal lives for the sake of leadership, for the sake of success, for the sake of, you know, the responsibility of a leader. So these leaders were coming to me with their life problems, their personal problems. Some were faced with bankruptcy. Some were faced with divorce. Some were being faced with losing their children. So here I was trying to coach my leadership client on the surface, on the leadership surface level. But here they were in this torment. They were living these separate lives. And so when they came to me, they're like, well, can you help me with this? Can you help me with this relationship with my wife or relationship with my spouse. I just don't know what to do anymore. And so as I worked with them and, and, and then I went to get a life coaching certification so that I could serve my leader at all levels. Um, leaders were then referring me to other leaders that were dealing with divorce or dealing with bankruptcy or dealing with being fired. And so here I was a leadership coach now trained as a life coach and now helping my leader holistically. And so as that was happening, I was, you know, building my practice, gaining a beautiful reputation in the leadership field, serving my leader at all levels of their lives, from personal to their leadership lives, and then helping them bridge those gaps. And so here I was building this beautiful practice and money was flowing in. I had no concern about that because, you know, I've done 24 years in the field of leadership with research and practical work. And so for me, that was like, yeah, well, of course it was an expectation. And so as I was bringing in life coaching clients, that weren't necessarily coming to me for leadership development, right? These were just, you know, perhaps a mom who was going to transition back to work after being home with her child for so long. Or, you know, a woman who was coming to me because she was sacrificing her spirituality for, you know, for her job or for her husband. And so then these women were coming to me with life problems. And then I started to freak out. And I just, my, my brain was like, wait, am I really a life coach? Can I really do this? 
But here I was, the evidence was showing me that yes, I could. And the money was a reflection of the value that I was giving. And it was a great, great salary as a, as a, you know, full-time coach, leadership coach. So my mind was wrapped around a lot of self-limiting beliefs. Like I had hit a ceiling, like it was too good to be true. Like it was an imposter syndrome. All of that was creeping up for me with my life coaching clients. So after that training, I had to really look within and I was so deeply inspired to then just go all out. And it was truly a connection between my mind and my spirit. And then I found myself in full alignment with my, with my calling. And I've always said my divine calling is to empower and educate others. That is, that is why I was put on this earth. I had to really just go back internally and look at who, who I am and what my calling is. And because of that training, I was able to then put myself out there. No, I mean, it was like a totally different entrepreneur. And I signed a woman who's a coach and she came on board and, you know, it was my first $10,000 fee for a life coaching client mm. who was not a leader. And so it's like, yes, please. I want more. And, you know, my, my leaders, you know, they're, they're ready to sign a check off to me. Right. You know, and, and to work with me for a year, it's 50,000 a person. And these leaders, you know, hire me through their organizations or they take out their checkbook and hire me personally. With the life coaching client, I had so many limiting beliefs about them. Like, no, they can't afford me. Nah, they won't be able to pay for this. And so then I started to question my value. I started to question my self-value versus my business value. I started to question, you know, whether I was equipped to help these women out there. And so I would lower my price and lower my price for them even more. And the more a woman, you know, a, a prospect would come in and say, that's just too much. Uh, okay, then... Uh, okay, then I think I'm doing this really, really wrong. Like, okay, you're right. You're right. Well, what can you pay for? And then there was a sliding scale that I had developed. And I'm like, what has happened to me? What has happened to me? And so again, after that training, I was empowered. I was confident. I was ready to step into the new version of the entrepreneur that I know I can be. And I know that I am. And now with that, and it's, it's beautiful to see that manifestation. Again, it's a direct correlation between <laughs> what I was thinking, what I was feeling and the value I'm giving. And, and then seeing it in my bank account was like, yes, please more check. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm now, I'm now, you know, really enjoying this other space that I'm in. And it all came from that three day seminar. And, and let me tell you, it was like a dream. I, I don't, I don't even know how I drove home that day. For those three days, because I was like in trance. I was in trance. <laughs> I mean, I mean, really, my subconscious had to drive me home because I was just like a totally different version of who I, you know, who I was before walking in that door to see you and Brandon. Wow. Thank you. I am so honored to even have you in the room because you're incredible. And I'm so excited to learn from you as well. And I continue to. Um, and it's amazing. Just one little simple shifts around money and like the value. And it's so interesting how we can be a powerhouse in one area of our life, but then it doesn't map over to another. And it's like, once you get that mental, once you unconsciously get the alignment with the mental and the unconscious, and then your spirit shift, it's, it's incredible what you can do. And it was like, literally it was one day, right? The next day you manifested that. Oh, no. Well, after the three day training, like yeah. a week later. Yeah. I mean, I was like, while I was there, I was getting emails like, Hey, are you interested in, in helping this person or a referral from another person? And, you know, my leaders are very, they're, they, they refer me out to everyone they know, which is fantastic. And so I was like, yeah, okay, sure. Whatever. And then a life coaching client would come through my doors and it was like, uh Oh, uh Oh, uh Oh, like, uh, they, they can't pay. They can't afford this. Oh my gosh. I, I, you know, I need to adjust myself and bend myself and twist myself just for them. And it was just like this really, really hard place that I had, I had, I had created for myself until that three day session or that three day. It's ironic because when we do that, we actually enable them and their disempowerment and then it's yes. like, you know, and so it is. And so then you'll actually start attracting it. So that's incredible. And I'm so happy for your success. And it's really helping and serving your ladies more anyway. So 
I, I yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, we appreciate you. So, how can everybody get a hold of you and get on your waiting list to get on your radar? Um, what does that process look like? I did put your information in the um, in the information at the top. So, anyone that would like to get a hold of her, is it is it's um, www.drdenisesimpson.com and then forward slash DCC. Yes, and then I will add another link okay. for the wait list. Yeah, that that link that you you um, posted is for them to get all the information they need. And then November 5th, when the doors open, I will, they'll be the first to, to be notified. And so I have a separate link for them to, to be on the wait list. Okay. Yeah, head over to the DCC page there on my website, and you'll get to learn about my story a little more than what I've shared with Deb today and what you're going to get with your benefits as a member in my program. Love it. Love it. Any last parting words? Yeah, you know, I just want to take this opportunity for anyone who's on the fence regarding NLP. This is a very, very strong modality that if you are a coach, if you identify as a healer, if you identify someone in the healing space, this is another strong modality that you need to include in your coaching practice important that you get training from the right people <laughs> because you know I've done NLP before but after you know spending time with Deb and Brandon I was able to really really dig into the, the changes I needed to, to, to make in my life but now I get to use those resources in my coaching practice and so if you are watching and you are on the fence about that um look look further into this because you know Deb and her husband have a wonderful training and I'm looking forward to, to doing more with you and Brandon very, very soon. Me too, yeah. sister. I'm so excited. So December, and then we um, also have the master's coming up in uh, July. Yes. And for those of you that are um, interested in just getting a taste of NLP, this is the training that um, Dr. Denise did um, about a month ago. We have one coming up in October, the 25th to the 27th. Um, we're having an amazing uh, special going on is an early bird special, which is marked down from nine ninety five to one hundred ninety five dollars. So, um, let us know if you're interested, and I'll also drop a, a drop a link in the comments. Um, ladies, take her up on the offer for Deliberate Creators. It is incredible, life changing stuff. Um, it's literally going to allow you to manifest all your dreams. That's all I got to say. So, get on our waiting list. Thank delicious. you so much. I, I want to have you on again, um, in the future too. And cause this is kind of turning into interviews and then like our expertise. And then I also want to create, you know, topics that we riffed about. Yeah. Um, and I would love to go down some rabbit holes with, um, the quanta, um, you know, spirituality and all those different things. So, um, yeah. stay tuned if you're open to it. I absolutely am. I yes. call on you again. Yes, for sure. <laughs> All right, beautiful mama. I love you so much. Okay. And I will see you too soon. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everyone.